If you have or want an LCD projector, you're bound to face this issue. So stick around in this video to see how to prevent it. It doesn't matter the brand prestige or cost if your projector uses LCD technology. This can happen to you too, precisely because it has an LCD screen and these need a polarizing filter that's very close to the power LED which heats it up a lot. These filters are actually designed to withstand a lot of heat, but if a fan inside breaks down, loses efficiency, or the heat sink gets blocked, the heat spikes and doesn't dissipate gradually building up in this glass filter. But enough talk, let's see this issue in action and how to fix it in one of the most popular projectors from Wembo, the 6 Max. Get to the video. For context, let me tell you that the 6 Max is one of the best-selling projectors from Wambo. Over a year ago, I reviewed it on my channel and was satisfied with its price and features. It has good sound power, high-quality, full HD images, and I even projected it on my two screens, the white one and the gray one, to see the difference in contrast, brightness, and sharpness. But what happens when a projector doesn't get much love? This is one of the most common issues with any LCD projector. And I mean any, because it can happen to anyone with an LCD projector. This horrible brown stain you see in the projection is a burn from the heat. And in this case, it covers more than 80 of the screen, making it look like this. Terrible, right? If even in well-lit images, the stain darkens the screen and looks this dim. Imagine in low-light images, you can barely see anything, making this projector useless. But that's not all. You can't use autofocus and the images look blurry since the focus system uses the camera to measure the images. But these images can't be measured accurately because of this horrible stain. So this is a great challenge I need to tackle. This one bot C-Max is a nice projector. I'll reflect later on whether it's good or bad, but because of that ugly stain, you can't really use it. And it really sucks to have invested so much just to keep it stored and not be able to use it right. But not all is lost, friends. There's a solution for everything in life. The good thing is at least it turns on, shows images, and can be controlled remotely. That's a big advantage. The other thing is, we need to investigate what's going on inside, though I have a slight suspicion. So it's time to get technical and see what's going on here. But I don't recommend you do it yourself because it's a very delicate job and you could completely ruin your projector. If you still want to do it, it'll be at your own risk. To start with, this projector doesn't belong to me. The truth is a subscriber from Kajamarka, after asking me many times, finally convinced me to fix it and send it to me. I don't usually play the technician, but since I have an electronics background from my studies, I sometimes give it a shot. The projector looks good and is practically new, so I decided to take it apart right away. I repeat, while this projector isn't too complex to disassemble, it's not exactly easy either. If you're brave, knowledgeable, and careful with handling things, you can follow my steps. But if not, don't even try because just touching the board could mess it up with the static electricity from your body, or you might break one of the very delicate flex connectors. Finally, I have the projector open, and now I'm going to disconnect the infrared sensor for the remote control and the small autofocus camera, and now I can finally remove the main block of the projector. It's obviously quite dusty, and this is one of the first signs of this issue. Since the dust stuck to the fan blades makes it less efficient at extracting hot air. Moreover, the aluminum heatsink is covered with lint dust and dirt, which also prevents it from cooling properly. Well, once the problem is detected, you have to go much further to solve it. I say this because this projector has a somewhat complicated construction. Since the main board is on top of the cover, I need to open to access the internal optics. Therefore, I have to remove all the Molex connectors, all the cables, the sensors, and the antennas that connect to the main board. And only after doing this can I remove the screws from the top case that protect the optics and the lens. And finally, I can access the interior of the most delicate part of the projector. 
notice that inside there's another fan to cool the LCD screen and the power LED. This is typical in mid-range projectors but not so much in cheap ones. At the top, there's the diffractor mirror that just changes the projection angle by 90 and this is the output correction lens. I've connected everything to do a live test and find the real cause of the problem because it could be the polarizing crystal but it could also be a burn on the LCD display itself. But first, I'll make sure both fans are working and indeed they are so there's ventilation. When you remove the correction lens, you can see the display works fine, but it apparently has a big brown spot, though you can still navigate it relatively smoothly. If I remove the LCD display and flip it over, you can see the part that's always in contact with the LED light is the one that's been heat damaged. Luckily, the LCD display comes in this kind of cartridge, and here I was pleasantly surprised to find that this cartridge also includes the independent polarizing crystal. So, it's not part of the LCD display. This crystal has two sides. One side looks like a mirror and faces the intense lead heat, and here you can see the wear. The other side is more translucent, and that's where the heat transfers. As you can see the burn effect in more detail here. Interesting, right? Hey buddy, if you're finding value in this video and learning something new, please give me a like and subscribe. Not everyone dares to do these kinds of repairs and show them in such detail, but I do it with a lot of enthusiasm for you all. The original polarizing glass for the Wambo Tsai Max arrived for Mr. Oscar Javier, which is me. And I got it directly from Wambo's after sales service, where you'll find this glass for all their projector models. And I think this is a service not every brand offers. It's perfectly packed with instructions and on this wooden board so it doesn't bend or break. Here you see it, it looks the same. Just like the burnt glass, it has one side that looks like a mirror and the other side is darker and more diffused. If I put it next to the burnt glass, they fit perfectly both in height and width. Since it's a replacement from Wembo's own after sales service, it couldn't be different. The glass comes protected by two plastic films to keep it clean and free of fingerprints. So I'll install it now, making sure the mirror side faces out. Now I can remove the second plastic protection film. Finally, I'll put the cartridge cover on, and that's how I changed the polarizing filter on this Wambo 6 Max. And humbly, I think it turned out perfect. Now, I'm going to put all the optics back in place, starting with the LCD display cartridge followed by the corrective lens and then the 90 degree diffractor mirror. But since I have the projector open, I promised the owner I'd remove the lens, so I'll take the chance to clean it inside and out, since during the initial test there were multiple specks of dust stuck on it. And now with a flashlight, I can check that those specks are gone. I'll put the lens back and make sure it fits and moves smoothly, now I can install the turbo fan and put the cover on and completely seal the optics of this projector. I did my best to leave the inside as clean as possible so the owner will be more than grateful. Heads up, this polarizing glass is original and was provided by Wembo's after sales service. Upload the link for the original polarizing glass in the description. But I hope by the time this video is published, the purchase link will be available. Anyway, check out the description if you're interested. Keep in mind that the polarizing glass depends on the projector. There are different sizes for different projector models and even different polarization angles, so it's not just buy and install. One more thing I'll do is clean and maintain it, and I'm sure less than one of people do this to their projectors. Now you know the consequences of not doing it at least once every three years. My friend can't complain because I've left it pretty awesome. Much, much better than how it arrived. Heads up, this issue isn't exclusive to Wemble projectors, it can happen to any brand. I started the video by saying that any LCD projector can have this problem. And that's because LCD projectors use an input polarizer that comes before the LCD display and it takes all the heat from the LED. 
And if there's not good ventilation or there's too much dirt, any projector from any brand could have its filter burned out. And I have to highlight that Wembo projectors are not only repairable, but they can even provide you with spare parts, which is really good of them. I'm not a Wembo brand defender, but I can't say that because of that awful brown stain, all Wembo projectors are bad because this can happen to any LCD projector. Not DLP and this is due to their own construction system. On the contrary, Wembo has shown me good construction and the advantage of having a second integrated fan and incorporating an independent polarizer crystal not attached to the LCD screen, which makes the 6 Max very repairable for issues like this by just replacing that crystal. However, in a cheap projector, you won't have an independent polarizer crystal that's easy to change since it's attached to the LCD screen. And replacing it is a complex, delicate process with the risk of damaging the LCD screen. Not to mention how hard it is to find a polarizer film with decal type adhesive. I've got this Wembo 6 Max repaired and now it's time to test it to see how well the repair worked. Great, we've given this good projector a second life and its owner is going to be very happy. Even the autofocus works well now. As you can see, it still runs smoothly and the images look pretty good even in dim light, although it's recommended to watch with the lights off for this projector. The problem of the burnt polarizing filter is common in LCD projectors but not in DLP projectors. That doesn't mean the latter don't fail, as they have their own issues like the white dot problem caused by the falling micro mirrors of the DMD chip. Also, changing the polarizing filter doesn't guarantee it won't burn out again. It depends on several factors like usage time, dust contamination, ambient temperature, ventilation, lack of maintenance, etc. But all these factors are directly related to accumulated heat, which is why in a previous video I suggested installing an external cooler to help extend the life of our beloved projector. The important thing is that this One Bodice Max is now well repaired. Obviously, I charged for my work, but you can see I was very detailed in doing it, so if you have a similar problem, maybe we can talk about it. Of course, only if I have time and the issue is known as very complex problems might not have a solution. In the end, I also learned a lot, and I'm happy to see this One Bodice Max has regained its former glory. I left it like new, and I say like new because I didn't just change the polarizing filter, but I also did maintenance and even cleaned the lens from the inside, so it has a few more years of use until it needs maintenance again, of course. As my grandfather used to say, everything has a solution in life and in the hands of an electronic engineer even more so, so subscribe to my channel because I create valuable content here. Help me and let's democratize technology. See you in the next video.